quite recently, I've been really getting to the idea of adding skis to an RC plane. There's just something so satisfying about watching them take off and land, especially when it's gliding smoothly across the snow. And because Colorado just got hit with a pretty big snowstorm, right now would be a perfect time to try out this idea for the first time. Now, I don't want to just add some normal skis on a plane and just fly it around, because ultimately, once it's in the air, it's just going to fly like normal, and the skis only become useful once you land or take off. So while watching some videos of people flying their plane in the snow, I thought of a pretty interesting concept that would be cool to try out as an experiment, and that is turning the skis into additional wings, or making them big enough that they start to affect the plane aerodynamically. Now, these skis aren't going to be fixed like typical wings, but instead be able to pivot freely, meaning the angle of attack changes depending on different speeds. This should in theory give the plane more lift when approaching slower speeds, kind of like automated flaps, but honestly I have no idea if this idea will actually be practical or even work. But since I haven't tried out skis on an RC plane before, I thought it would be pretty important on knowing how to make skis in the first place. So first we need a plane. And just a week ago I started building this, which if you watched my shorts and looked at my post, you probably could have guessed this is meant to be a tow plane. And because the snow has started to melt pretty quickly, this is really my only option, as all my other projects are currently being worked on. How I built this plane will be in my next video, where I release some gliders in the sky, as the build process will make a lot more sense in that context. And here is where I flew the plane for the first time before the snow. So even with flying this plane on a really windy day, it actually flew quite well. Um, it did have a tendency to turn to the right a little bit, which I think either might be because there's too much weight on one wing or because the other wing was warped a little bit. But once it got in the air, it flew just fine. Uh, I'm actually really surprised there was no uh, stabilization in this plane or like flight controllers. It was just mainly just electronics, uh, servos and the motors. And it flew around quite nicely and I was pretty happy with it. Yeah. And with now knowing that this plane could fly pretty well, it was now time to make the skis. So to start, I went to Onshape and designed these brackets so it would connect to the landing gear wire and then to the actual foam skis. And by the way, if you want to change or have access to any of these parts, all you have to do is create a free Onshape account and search up the name for these documents. Onshape is cloud-based, meaning all my designs are public to anyone that has an account. All these prints are going to be printed on my Quiddy XCF Pro. These parts are quite small, so I decided just to use some standard PLA. And for some reason, after printing the first bracket, it failed twice after that. Most likely because I forgot to clean off the nozzle after the first print. Alright, so I went to the printer this morning, and I pulled out this. I'm trying it one last time. This time I cleaned off the nozzle, so then hopefully it's not sticking. Probably just have a camera to see what's going on, but yeah, this is definitely kind of unfortunate. And since the first bracket was ready to go, I took off the wheel on the plane and to hold it in place, I was using some hot glue dots at the end. So I just took that off and my plan for the skis were to secure them with some collars at the end. But unfortunately, I guess the wire on this one was slightly too short. Um, so it was just not enough to have the collars hold in place. So I just had to use some hot glue dots. Not the most ideal thing because I'm pretty sure it's going to take on some stress. Most likely it's just going to fall out of place, but for now, that's all I can do. And for the skis, I'm just going to be using some Debron. The stuff is pretty durable and also waterproof, which should be perfect for the snow. I just cut out a rectangle and then just kind of folded it. And then I sanded the brackets down so then it could have a tighter hold on the skis. Glued that in place and it was looking pretty good. And then to make sure the skis stay in an upright position and don't like flop around in the air, I added a little rubber band that attached to the ski and then to the landing gear wire. And this actually worked pretty well. All right, this time it finally, finally did not self-destruct. Finally finished pretty. So I went ahead and finished the second ski. And then for the tail, I didn't want it to just dig into the snow. So I created this little uh, foam piece at the end. I could just connect with a screw. Uh, so I just screwed that in and with everything done, it was now ready for the first test. And unfortunately, by the time I went out to go try it, the snow was already like half melted. So it was really slushy like. So every time I tried to run it off the ground with these skis, it just kept digging to the snow. But thankfully, I brought some extra foam plates. So I just taped these under the original skis and it gave the skis a little more surface area to run. Not though it looks like it's flying fine in the video, it really flew 
pretty terribly um, in terms of the control. Um, they would always lose throttle after a few seconds of flying, and also it just didn't have much control in terms of roll. I was trying to add a lot of input, and it was just was not responding until like a few seconds later. And this happened for the rest of the flights, which I couldn't really figure out. Oh yeah, it just, it doesn't turn. Oh. Oh, that's not ideal. Yeah, it feels like it doesn't want to turn, but it's flying much better. Oh my god, it, this is terrible. I cannot control it. Oh. Oh, it's not dirty. Oh my god. It really does not want to turn. I'm at full. It, fly, it looks like it flies fine, but oh, guess not. Oh, come on, come back. Yeah, it just really can't. I don't know why. What's going on? It's like it, it feels like I'm losing s signal, but huh? All right, so um, crash landed one again. Once again, it's weird. It's like at a certain point, it just kind of just loses its power. Oh, <laughs> it landed perfectly in a sewer. Wait, what are the chances of that? <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um. But yeah, this plane flies horribly. Uh, I don't. I think it, it flew much better at the park. Um, so don't know what's going on now. Must be just because of the crashes. But it's just, it's like I'm at full aileron left. It just does not want to. Just does not want to turn in any direction. I'm um, gonna have to go back home and do some tests. But also gonna need to fix this landing gear. But uh, it's very unlikely that this plane will be another snow plane again because this foam is not waterproof, as you can tell. This keeps going in water and it's just gonna destroy itself. But uh, I think I'm gonna remove these skis, uh, replace them with the wheels or something because I'm gonna have to fix this, this issue here because I don't know, I have no idea why it's just can't fly normally. <laughs> I don't know how much percent battery we're looking at here. Oh, 12%. Uh, makes sense. <laughs> Do I... I probably should have checked the percentage before I flew just to see. Because um, I don't know if it died that quickly because the battery sucks or because I just we were flying it for a while. Now, because the battery dropped much lower than I was expecting, this made me assume that the battery was the issue. Um, the battery could be an issue because it's a pretty old battery, but the main issue was definitely not the battery, as you'll see later. Where is it? Ah! Ah! Okay, so um, it crashed really badly. I first thought it's because I lost signal, but it turns out this ESC is so hot that it melted the glue that it was stuck onto. So I think this is another reason why the other battery was like so hot the other time. But yeah, this is like steam. Like my feet are on for too hot, it's gonna really burn my skin. So that is pretty bad. Um, I think uh, you said how many amps? 12. 12 amps. Um, I'm gonna have to go see if that's too small. Most likely it's too small then. So if we were to do the calculations, A for being amps, W for being watts, and V for being volts, and we substitute everything, we get about 18 amps. So compared to the 12 amp ESC, you can definitely tell why it failed so terribly. Um, I think what might have happened is that when making this plane, I upgraded my battery to a three cell from a two cell and also made my motor 
more powerful and i forgot to switch the esc so yeah that really really sucks uh, i'm pretty sure if everything were to work properly i could have done more tests with the skis and also just fly it like normal um but i'm gonna have to make a couple changes with the electronics and also the aircraft itself because it kind of just just it's pretty destroyed now most likely the next time you'll see this experiment uh series or whatever probably gonna be either um when it snows again which i don't know when or when I make another aircraft uh, that's more suited for the snow. Uh, but for right now, I think I'm just going to focus on this plane, fixing it back up and work on the tow gliding experiment that I originally wanted to do. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. And I'll see you again once I get some better electronics.